Now starting the June 2nd, 2022 Mount Pleasant Planning Commission meeting, Mr. Kane, will you take roll? Devenny? Here. Friedrich? Here. Avales? Here. Honig? Here. Irwin? Kingsworthy? Here. Nicholas? Here. Leash? Ortman? Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes, starting with the May 5th, 2022 regular meeting minutes. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is approval of the May 5th, 2022 work session minutes. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is the Zoning Board of Appeals report. Commissioner Friedrich? Madam Chair, we did not meet. Thank you. And next item on the agenda is communications. Mr. Kane? Madam Chair, you have one communication that was included in your packet tonight, which comes from Isabella County. They are working on a master plan update. Um, there's some information in the letter regarding availability of that uh, plan update. Um, it's not yet on the web, but when it does get placed on the web, we'll be sure to let the Planning Commission know so you have an opportunity to review and provide comment if you wish. Thank you. And next item on the agenda is SUP 2205. Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our first public hearing tonight is a request for a special use permit for an adult use marijuana retailer. This is at 1207 East Pickard. The subject property is located in the CD4 General Urban Zoning District as a future land use of mixed use medium. The building is currently vacant, but the Planning Commission may recall that in August of 2021, a special use permit and site plan approval was granted for a medical marijuana provisioning center. This adult use marijuana retailer is proposed to co-locate with that medical marijuana provisioning center. The property owner is Pickard Property LLC. Our applicant tonight is 3967 Euclid LLC. And the site area is 1.77 acres. As I mentioned, the property is on East Pickard. This is at the uh, northeast corner of the intersection of Pickard and Brown Streets. Uh, the property is primarily surrounded by properties that are also located in the CD4 General Urban Zoning District, with the exception of the property immediately to the north, which is zoned industrial with a future land use of industrial. And most of the land uses in the surrounding area are retail in nature, um, including Meyer, the Meyer gas station, a tire store, um, and another a Speedway gas station, as well as a class one restaurant. On the screen, you'll see current conditions of the property. This picture is taken from Pickard looking towards the northeast, so approximately that intersection and stoplight at Pickard and Brown. You'll see some of the many improvements that the applicant has already made in association with the site plan approval that was granted in August of 2021, including some updated landscaping, new signage, bicycle parking, uh, sidewalk connection to the building, et cetera. The applicant's not proposing to make any additional site changes with this application, so staff has included the existing site plan of record in your packet um, for reference, um, as that would be the controlling site plan associated with this SUP upon approval as well. The existing building has 4,200 square foot and was built in 2005. This is just a little bit closer view of the property looking towards the north from Pickard. Again, I mentioned there is a sidewalk connection that's been added to the main entrance from the public sidewalk along Pickard, as well as a significant amount of landscaping improvements that were made to bring the property into compliance with current standards. Adult use marijuana retailers are subject to a special use permit in the CD4 zoning district. And with that uh, special use permit requirement, there are a number of specific conditions that must be met. Those conditions are outlined in your report and they primarily have to do with um, the location of the facility as well as the operational characteristics. Um, and so as such, staff's recommendation is that the um, includes a condition that the applicant continue to maintain compliance with these SUP standards, um, given that most relate to operations. Again, I mentioned the site plan for the property. This is largely built out, and so this is really the final step in uh, the applicant's efforts to relocate the marijuana businesses that are currently located at 1005 Corporate Drive over to this 1207 East Pickard location. 
And with that, staff's recommendation after the public hearing is that the Planning Commission approve SUP 2205 subject to the following conditions. One, the applicant shall comply with all special use permit criteria for adult use marijuana establishments, as well as the specific criteria applying to retailers. Two, the applicant shall comply with all conditions associated with SUP 2113 and SPR 2111. That's the approval I referenced earlier from August of 2021. And three, the applicant shall comply with the requirements of building safety, public safety, and public works. We do have the applicant on Zoom this evening to answer any questions that the Planning Commission might have. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Kane? Okay. Um, if the applicant would like to speak. The applicant speaking, it looks like everyone's muted. Lisa or Paolo, if you'd like to adjust the Planning Commission, just unmute your mic. Um, I'm not sure if I should ask if people have Questions for the applicant? Um, <coughs> he's having technical issues. Madam Chair, if you want to go ahead and hold the public hearing and then we can come back and see if the applicant's able to. Oh, we may have Lisa unmuted. Why don't we go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and see if the applicant's available. Okay, uh, is, if there's anyone that would like to make a comment, um, I'm opening up the public hearing for this hearing, if anyone would like to speak. I don't see anyone here in person. Is there anyone with electronic communication? I don't have any raised hands on Zoom and we have no electronic communications. Thank you, I will close public comment and um, if the applicant is available now, if you'd like to speak. Did anyone have questions for the applicant? Okay, um, then if someone would like to <coughs> make a motion or we could start discussion. I'll move to approve SUP 2205 subject to the following conditions. One, the applicant shall comply with all special use permit criteria for adult use marijuana establishments, as well as the specific criteria re applying to retailers. Two, the applicant shall comply with all conditions associated with SUP 2113 and SPR 2111. And three, the applicant shall comply with the requirements of building safety, public safety, and public works. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is SCP 2206 and SPR 2210. Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our second public hearing tonight is a request for a special use permit and site plan review for a drive through restaurant. The property is located at 2013 South Mission Street and is located in the CD5 Urban Center Zoning District. There are two special requirements that apply to this property, um, neither of which relates to the proposed use. Future land use is mixed use high. The property was most recently used as a furniture store. However, it's been vacant for approximately uh, one year to 18 months. It was originally constructed to be a bank with a drive through Property owners Latavis Enterprises Incorporated, the applicant is Phoenix Enterprises II Incorporated, uh, which is a Jimmy John's franchisee, and the site area is 1.92 acres. The site is located just south of the intersection of South Mission and East Broomfield Streets. Um, it is just north of Mercantile Bank and south of a shopping center that includes uh, multiple tenants as well as a car wash. Immediately to the west of the property is Wayside Central, which is a bar and nightclub. Immediately east of the site is an apartment complex uh, consisting of rooming dwellings. 
properties in all directions share the same zoning and overlays as the subject property in the CD5, as well as the same future land use of mixed use high. On the screen, you'll see a, a picture of current conditions of the property. This is looking from South Mission Street towards the Northeast, and you'll see the drive-through canopy associated with the former bank drive-through use, which is located on the south side of the property. The applicant's proposing to remove that canopy and move the drive-through window to the north side of the building, as shown on the site plan. The next picture on the screen will show current conditions looking from the interior of the site at the rear back towards Mission Street. And so you'll see there is a driveway connection to a common shared driveway that connects East Broomfield into the Central Commons Shopping Center, uh, which includes Hobby Lobby and various other tenants. So there's great cross connectivity already in existence on this site. Drive-through restaurants are subject to a special use permit in the CD5 zoning district. There are four specific standards that relate to a drive-through restaurant in this zoning district. Those are included in your packet. Um, as noted on the screen, one of those standards does not apply in this situation due to the adjacent zoning districts um, of this property. One of the standards is met currently, which is the access point standard having to do with offsets from adjacent intersections. And there are two standards relating to the drive-through location and queue length. <laughs> They will need to be addressed in an updated site plan, uh, assuming the Planning Commission acts this evening to approve with conditions. Upon resubmittal to staff, we would look for those items to be addressed. There is room on the site for these items to be addressed without any major modifications, and so we would expect that with conditions, we could get the plan in full compliance with those standards. <coughs> on the screen, you'll see an overview of the proposed site conditions. As I mentioned, the existing drive through canopy located on the south side of the building would be removed and a new drive through window would be installed on the northeast corner of the building uh, with vehicles driving around the back and queuing. As I noted, there is room for this uh, queue to extend further uh, to the east on the site to provide the appropriate stacking distance required by code and to also pull that stack back behind the building where code requires it to be located. Just to do a quick review, the applicant's not proposing to make any other changes to the building with the exception of adding that new drive-through window and removing the existing drive-through canopy. And so several of the building standards within CD5 don't apply. In terms of other site plan issues, the applicant's proposing 14 vehicular parking spaces, but there are not barrier-free parking spaces shown on the current site plan, and so we'll need those to be added, and that may impact the total amount of parking that's ultimately provided. The site does have two existing driveways on the South Mission, one of which is shared with the bank to the south. It also has existing uh, shared access on the east side of the site connecting out to Broomfield, as well as to the Central Michigan Common Shopping Center. We'll anticipate that with the resubmittal, we'll get those barrier-free parking spaces shown, as well as the required sidewalk connection to the building, which we would ask to be aligned with the barrier-free aisle of those spaces um, to provide safe pedestrian access. The applicant has shown some bicycle parking on the site, but we don't have specifications on the type and quantity of that parking, and so we'll be looking for that to be added. Uh, because of the size of the existing building, that standard will likely rel relate back to the number of vehicular parking spaces provided. Based on the 14 currently shown, there would be three bicycle parking spaces required. However, with the addition of that barrier-free parking, we may see that number go down um, to that one per five standard. We may see that drop to two. There's only 10 vehicles parking spaces ultimately. In terms of other standards, the applicant is proposing to build a new dumpster enclosure on the northeast corner of the parking lot. Uh, we will need some specifications to ensure it conforms to the requirements of the CD5 zoning district. In the CD5 <coughs> district, there is a requirement for trees in the first lot layer, one per 50 foot of frontage. There's an existing tree in the northwest corner of the property, and so we'll be looking for two additional trees to be planted in the landscaping area that's between the parking lot and the sidewalk. At this point, there's no mechanical equipment shown on the plans. If any mechanical equipment is going to be added to the property, it would need to be screened from the street and adjacent properties in accordance with the requirements of the CD5 district. And in terms of street screening, there is an existing uh, evergreen screen along the parking lot that's consistent with the requirements for the district. Staff's recommendation after the public hearing is that the Planning Commission approve SUP 2206 and SPR 2210 subject to the following conditions. One, the proposed stacking lane be extended to the easterly portion of the site so that it is fully located in the third lot layer, consistent with the special use permit requirements for drive-through establishments. 
Two, the applicant shall submit an updated site plan which demonstrates <coughs> compliance with the minimum specifications for the following standards, parking dimension and layout, pedestrian access, bicycle parking, private landscaping and dumpster enclosure. And three, the applicant shall comply with the requirements of building safety, public safety, and public works. Any questions for Mr. Kane? I'm just curious, the reference to the stacking for the, into the <coughs> easterly portion of the site, so it's fully located in the third lot layer, are we saying that that, that um, the stacking would go would go this way around. Is that essentially, yeah? Okay. So it would it would probably wrap the south edge of that landscaped area to the north side yeah. as a U, mm -hmm. and there's well over 200 foot of space there. So we'll just be looking for striping or or signage that'll indicate that that's the direction of the queue mm -hmm. to ensure that it's able to stack in the location that code requires. Very good. Any other questions for Mr. Kane? If the applicant would come up. Hi. Hello. Um, is there anything you want to say? Um, no, I apologize. You guys were muted for like the first portion of that, so I, I couldn't hear what was being said, but um, um, we, you know, we, the, the medical, uh, was approved to be moved. So now we're just, um, looking to transfer that, that other license over and, um, move into the, the building on Picker. We're actually, we actually approved your, your application and oh, moved on to another I'm year. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um. It seemed like Michael Stein was about to say something. Hi, good evening. Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 No, sorry, I wasn't. I was just um, coughing into the phone. <laughs> sorry. No, I'm the I'm the attorney with uh, with jars, but no, I I have I have nothing to add. Thank you. Um, is the applicant for or uh, for the um. SCP-2206 and SPR-2210 here? It's not appear that they are. Okay. No, no, we're, we were, we're, we're appearing via Zoom. We, did, we didn't know that you needed us there. Uh, but you were here for a different hearing. We're actually doing a, a hearing unrelated to JARS right now. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, since the applicant um, for SCP-2206 and SPR-2210 isn't here, I guess we can move on to discussion. Well, you need to hold a public oh, hearing. Right. And, and if there's any questions about the application, I, staff, I can attempt to field those as best I can um, if you have any information you require before taking action. Thank you, and thank you for reminding me it's a public hearing. <laughs> uh, I will open up public comment if anyone from the public would like to comment. I don't see anyone here. Is no electronic communications or any folks on Zoom with hands raised. Thank you. I will close public comment and open up discussion. Move to approve SUP 2206 and SPR 2210. Subject to the following conditions. One, the proposed stacking lane should be extended to the easterly portion of the site so that it is fully located in the third lot layer consistent with the special use permit requirements for drive through establishments. Two, the applicant shall submit an updated site plan which demonstrates compliance with the minimum specifications for the following standards. Parking dimensional layout, pedestrian access, bicycle parking, private landscaping and dumpster enclosure. And three, the applicant shall comply with the requirements of public or building safety, public safety, and public works. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is SUP 2207. Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good news is we have both of our applicants present for the next few cases, so <laughs> shouldn't have any more hybrid meeting hiccups, I hope. 
Uh, our next public hearing is a request for a special use permit for an accessory dwelling unit. The subject property is located at 931 South Fancher in the CD3 Suburban Zoning District. There's a future land use of residential. The current and prior uses as a single family dwelling and our applicant Sean Storica is here in the audience tonight to answer your questions. Site area is just shy of a quarter acre. On the wrong way. Subject property is located at the northeast corner of <coughs> South Fancher and East Gaylord Streets. This is just around the corner from Fancher School and just north of Central Michigan University. The subject property is located in an area that's predominantly zoned CD3 suburban, like the subject property, with a future land use of residential. Um, three of the adjacent land uses are single family dwellings. Um, the property to the north is a single family dwelling that has an accessory dwelling unit um, similar to the request tonight at the subject property. Here's a view of current conditions of the property. This is taken from Fancher looking towards the south and east. So Gaylord Street would be just to the right on the image. You'll see in the foreground, there's a former garage uh, with two windows, um, slightly different character than the, the rest of the dwelling. That is the area in which the applicant's proposing to modify the interior to create an accessory dwelling unit. On the screen, you'll see a perspective, sort of the opposite perspective, looking from East Gaylord towards the north and west. And so you'll see an existing garage on the property that's detached in the rear of the historic home structure. The home, uh, the integrity of that existing single family home will be maintained. It is a later addition where the accessory dwelling unit is proposed to be constructed. Accessory dwelling units are permitted in the CD3 zoning district subject to special use permit. And there are several specific criteria that apply to an accessory dwelling in order to get approval. The applicant has met those criteria. They're outlined in your packet. Um, and they're outlined on the screen as well. And so with that, staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission, after the public hearing, approve SGP 2207, subject to the following condition. <coughs> the applicant shall comply with the requirements of building safety and public works. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll turn it over to you uh, for questions. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Payne? The applicant would like to come up. I just have a couple things to add. Uh, over the last two weeks, we did get the water main uh, repairs done. So both houses now have their appropriate shutoffs. Um, and we also made up uh, our uh, easement agreements uh, for the sewer lines. Um, and there was something else, but I totally blank on what it was. <laughs> uh, oh yes, I had the fire marshal come out and look at the building um, to make notes of possible issues in terms of building safety. And the only one that he had made noted of was the bedroom window needed to be changed, which we are taking steps currently to correct that if this is to be approved. So other than that, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, any questions for the applicant? Thank you. I, I will open up the public comment portion of this hearing if anyone would like to comment. I don't see anyone here. Are there any electronic communications? No, and it doesn't appear we have anyone on Zoom looking to comment. Thank you. I will close public comment and open up discussion. Move to approve SUP 2207. Subject to the following condition, the applicant shall comply with the requirements of building safety and public works. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is SUP uh, 2208. Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our next public <laughs> hearing is a request for special use permit for a short-term rental. The subject property is located at 220 North Guinea and 608 East Chippewa. This property is also located in the CD3 suburban zoning district. And I apologize on the screen that future land use should say residential. Current and prior use of the property is as a single family dwelling with an attached accessory dwelling unit. Property owner and applicant are Ryan Litwiller and Lisa Janitis. And the site area is just shy of a half acre. The property is located on the southeast corner of uh, North Kinney and East Chippewa Streets in the CD3 zoning district. This is just to the north and east of downtown Mount Pleasant. Surrounding land uses are primarily single family. Uh, future land use of residential and similar zoning to the subject property of CD3 Suburban. On the screen is a perspective of the 608 East Chippewa site, which is the accessory dwelling unit. This structure, as I understand it, was originally constructed as a doctor's office for a physician that resided in the main home. 
And so it has a slightly different architectural character from the existing home, but it has been located here for several decades. The Planning Commission in 2015 approved the property to be a duplex under our prior zoning ordinance, um, which allowed for that space to be converted from its prior office use into a separate dwelling. On the screen, you'll see the opposite perspective. This is taken from North Kinney looking towards the Northeast. And so you'll see the primary uh, single family dwelling structure um, to which the accessory dwelling is attached. The applicant is proposing to use only the accessory dwelling as a short term rental. Um, the applicants are owner occupants of the primary dwelling and will remain so under the proposed conditions. Short term rentals are um, subject to allowed subject to special use permit in the CD3 zoning district. And there are several specific criteria that apply to short term rentals. Um, those are outlined in your report and on the screen. The applicants um, proposed conditions are compliant with all of those standards. And so with that, steps, recommendations, an easy one, if anyone wants to take up the motion, this would be the one to grab, would be to, <laughs> after the public hearing, approve SUP 2208. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kane. Any questions for Mr. Kane? Hey, Mr. Kane, for the uh, benefit of the new commissioners, too, could you define what a short-term rental is? Is that an Airbnb, or is that a, a seasonal rental? Or That's a good question. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull my code out. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> Just so I get it exactly right, because we do have several different uh, dwelling types, and I don't want to misspeak. Um, but yes, uh, Airbnb would be kind of the shorthand everyday parlance for what folks generally mean and think of when they talk about a short-term rental. Um, but essentially, yeah, the idea would be that you would have a shorter term tendency than you would typically have in a rental property. So a short term rental is a dwelling unit that provides temporary accommodations for a period of less than 28 days. Okay. So thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Mr. Kane? If the applicant would like to come up. I don't think we really have anything to say, but if you have questions, we're willing to answer them. Any questions for the applicant? Is there an Airbnb? Um, that's what we're hoping to have the freedom to do that or, yeah. And yes. be able to use it ourselves for family and stuff. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thanks. I will open up the public comment portion of this hearing and if anyone from the public would like to speak. I don't see anyone here. No electronic communications or Zoom participants either. Thank you. I will close public comment and open up discussion. Then a motion to approve SUP 2208. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is TC 2205. Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our last public hearing tonight is a text amendment. This would modify the city's current regulations as they relate to child care organizations in two principal ways. Um, one, it would move group daycare homes and child care centers from special uses to permitted uses in the districts where they're currently allowed as special uses. And it would also expand the districts in which child care centers are permitted. Um, and so we'll be adding um, the SDRC and civic zones for child care centers and making group daycare homes and child care centers permitted uses in all the districts where they're currently allowed as special uses under the code. Um, this was introduced to you at your May meeting, and so staff's recommendation tonight is after the public hearing that the Planning Commission recommend the City Commission adopt to exchange 2205. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Kane? I will open up the public comment portion of this hearing if anyone from the public would like to comment. I do not see anyone here that wants to comment, Mr. Kane. It does not appear we have any electronic communications at this time. Thank you. I'll close public comment and open up discussion.
Move to approve that the city commission adopt tax change 2205. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, if anyone would like to make a comment, this is your last opportunity to do so. Uh, so please feel free to come up. Not see anyone here wanting to speak, Mr. Kane. No electronic communications at this time. Thank you. I'll close public comment. And next item on the agenda is under new business. Discuss amendment to section 154.410B4 of the zoning ordinance regarding registered student organization dwellings and consider setting a public hearing on the issue at the July 7th, 2022 regular meeting. Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our next item was discussed by the Planning Commission at your May work session. Um, and it will essentially uh, result in two changes to the code uh, as it relates to registered student organization dwellings. One, it would adjust the location requirements for an RSO dwelling to mirror the current requirements of, for rooming dwellings. Um, as they currently exist, RSO dwelling location standards are stricter than those for rooming dwellings. This modification would allow for greater flexibility on the location of uh, those RSO dwellings, primarily impacting properties that are along the east side of South Main Street, south of High. Um, the Planning Commission, uh, some of you who have been on the Planning Commission for a while will recall that uh, in 2015, the Planning Commission undertook some amendments to the rules for RSOs and rooming dwellings that included creating a buffer between what was then the R3 zoning district and the existing M2 zoning district. Those buffer standards carried over even as the zoning map changed. And so these buffers used to apply to an area that's much further east. Um, and so this would... I think it makes more sense in the light of the existing zoning map to um, provide some parity between the rules for RSOs and rooming dwellings. The second change is to really codif codify the existing practice where when a RSO dwelling, um, when the RSO residing the dwelling loses its recognition by the university, um, there's not really a default to a rooming dwelling under the code, but in practice, that's been the pattern and the history. And so this would just put that into code to um, make it clear that if an RSO loses its status, that property can be used and would default into rooming dwelling status um, in that interim period. And so that's, that's an overview of the proposed changes. I think relatively minor, but could potentially have a beneficial impact for uh, those registered student organizations that sometimes struggle to find suitable housing in the limited areas where they're permitted within the city by opening that up a little bit more. Um, and also for just codifying our practice so that it's clear in the code what happens in that otherwise ambiguous situation. So I'd welcome any questions, Madam Chair, that you might have. Otherwise, just looking to set up public hearing on the item for your July meeting. Thank you. Um, any questions for Mr. Kane? Would anyone like to make a motion? Or discuss? Move to set a public hearing to consider the proposed text changes at our July 7th, 2022 regular meeting. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is discuss amendment to section 154.410 C2B and table 154.410A of the zoning ordinance regarding group B special regulated uses and consider setting a public hearing on this issue at the July 7th regular meeting. Mr. Payne. Thank you, Madam Chair. Also in your May work session, the Planning Commission discussed the city's current list of special regulated uses and potential modifications to the uses included on that list. The ordinance presented to you tonight would remove two use uh, categories from that list of special regulated uses, um, and that includes palm readers, psychic readers, horoscope analysis, or other professions purporting to predict the future, as well as pool and billiard halls. So that would be the impact of that ordinance would be removal of those uses. Um, through the removal of those uses, um, those would be categorized um, under more broad categories within the use table by not being specifically called out and would likely become permitted uses 
in the district or special uses, depending on, for instance, if a pool or a billiard hall was associated with a liquor license, it may be categorized as a special use under those standards. So staff's recommendation tonight is just simply that the Planning Commission set a public hearing on this item for your July meeting. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Kane? Any discussion or a motion? Move to set a public hearing to consider the proposed text change at the July 7th, 2022 meeting. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. The next item on the agenda is staff report, Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we do have two administrative reviews to report out. And the first I'm um, excited to share was our first project approved under our new minor site plan review process. So that was nice to um, give that a trial run with that application. Uh, I think it went very well. We were able to turn that around in just a couple business days. Um, and the applicant was very appreciative that it was a lower cost and uh, faster service. Um, that was an application to add a 100 square foot building addition to a catering business located at 1010 West Broadway. Our second administrative approval was for um, 1217 South Mission. This was for a reconstruction of an existing parking area at that business. Um, I wanted to give an opportunity tonight for our two new planning commission members to introduce themselves. I think some of you had an opportunity to meet before the meeting, and I apologize for putting you on the spot, but if you just want to share your name, your entire history and background, <laughs> you know, deep personal secrets, and then we'll move on to our next item. Andrew, you want to start us off? Uh, uh, Andrew Davini, I'm the associate director for the Center for Learning Through Games and Simulations at Central Michigan University. So I've lived in Mount Pleasant since I was a student here. Many years. Welcome. I'm Kelly Nicholas, and I've lived here again since 96. I too was a student here and then never left and got three additional degrees again from the, since then and so forth. And right now I'm a leasing manager again for a, a apartment complex um, in town again that geared toward again senior housing. Welcome. Oh, welcome Planning Commission, both of you. Um, I admit those secrets were a little underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, I, Bill Merdiz is here tonight to join us, and I know he wants to say a few words, but if you want to go up to the podium before, as he's making his way up, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. It's been an absolute pleasure working with the Planning Commission for the last seven and a half years. Um, it really has. It's been fun, even when it's been challenging and weird. Um, and we all know it's been challenging and weird at different points. Um, Mount Pleasant's an amazing city. A lot of great people here. Uh, I know you guys will continue to do a great job uh, going forward and making sure the future of Mount Pleasant is a good one. Um, holding tight on standards and making sure Mount Pleasant doesn't give on things we don't need to give on because we're worth good stuff here. Um, so keep up the fight and uh, I look forward to seeing great things happen here um, from a slight distance, 30 miles or so east of here. So, and thank you for being so hospitable to me as your staff. I would tell you not every planner in the state is fortunate enough to work with planning commissions that are as um, generous and funny and nice to work with as you guys have always been in all your permutations for seven and a half years. I've never dreaded coming here. It's always been a lot of fun. So I really appreciate it. You will definitely be missed. Yes. <laughs> Bill. Thank you. I think I've met most of you at one point or another, but I'm Bill Mordeza. I'm the Community Services uh, Division Director. And um, I just wanted to, one, acknowledge the stellar work that uh, Mr. Kane has done in his seven years here. And I don't think I need to go on and on because you guys have been very closely associated with him in your work. You've all done excellent work. And I think under Jacob's leadership, um, we as the city have benefited greatly for that. And, um, I will say that not only personally, but professionally, he will be greatly missed. So um, we know where to find him, though, if we need him. So. <laughs> but um, again, uh, just acknowledge the, the stellar work Jacob's done. Uh, an amazing individual, amazing professional, and we're greatly going to miss him. Um, I just wanted to also indicate to you that as we move forward from Mr. Kane's departure, um, you can expect to see me a bit more at your meetings. Just, um, I, I certainly cannot replace what Jacob does or how he, 
how he conducts his meetings. And so hopefully we'll be able to move forward perhaps a bit more hesitantly at first, but um, move forward with the business of the Planning Commission. Um, I, at the present time, um, we're working on some opportunities to fill in for our planning services that Mr. Kane will be, um, will be vacating. So I, I want to assure you that we will do our level best to make sure that we continue to have the appropriate level of professionalism and planning services available to address the, the work of the Planning Commission as we move forward. Um, the first month or so might be a little bit rough as we kind of ease into that or at least uh, adjust our, our expectations a bit. But So bear with us, um, and I'll have more to, uh, to say about that either um, via email or you know, perhaps at your next meeting, hopefully before your next meeting, in terms of what we are able to, um, to deliver in that regard. The other thing that I will mention is that we are in the process of finalizing the back of the house paperwork, if you will, that is required for us to move forward with advertising the, the, uh, the vacancy that Jacob is leaving. Um, and so as we get that done, hopefully by middle of next week, um, get the approvals and the, uh, the language set forth and that type of thing, we'll be able to put out the advertisements for the, uh, for the position. Um, Quickly, and I'm hopeful that it won't take us as long as when we last had a vacancy more than seven years ago to fill that position. But um, in the interim, as I said, we will uh, take the steps necessary to make sure that we continue to provide the, the services that you require and the city requires as far as our, um, our planning services. And we certainly do not want to go backwards from the great work that you guys have all, all done. So I, again, just a brief update at this point, put a name with a face here for me and um, I'll probably be seeing you a bit more than, than I have in the past. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You guys have all done a great job of not being difficult for the last seven and a half years. So now's your chance. <laughs> 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 Take your opening while it's here. <laughs> Anything further? That's it for staff report tonight. Um, well, I guess if anyone would like to make a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Meeting adjourned. Gavel. Yeah, gavel. So what do you, uh, what do, you do for I, your um, data break? Like I just go to whatever. To uh, I usually go to. Uh, <laughs>